Hi, I'm Jed Hearn and this is Quick Storytelling Tips. Editing well is about seeing your own writing as if it belonged to a stranger. When you feel attachment to what is down in front of you, when you feel that the words on the page have come from you, it's hard to have that level of objectivity that you need to be ruthless with the writing and work out, you know, hey, this thing doesn't really work too well. But if you can convince yourself that what's down on the page isn't something that you've put down, but just work to get through, your job as an author and as an editor becomes so much easier. So really the way I think about editing is, it's not so much the process of learning how to improve your stories, it's more the process of just learning how to read yourself. Learning how to read yourself as if you, as if the words that are on the page belong to a stranger. So I've written down six key ways that I've, that wasn't even six, six key ways that I have applied this logic to my own stories uh, and I hope I can bring value to you by sharing those now. So number one, wait as long as possible. So I know this is so, so hard to do if you've just finished a story and you're like buzzing on that energy from having completed your 100,000, 40,000, 200,000 word manuscript. It's hard to resist the urge to just dive straight back in and experience the wonderful writing that you've just produced because it's going to be 100% wonderful, isn't it? Well, probably not. But if you dive back in too quickly, you won't have the clear-mindedness you need to spot those flaws and to be ruthless with your book, which you need to do if you want to produce good art. So I definitely recommend leaving it as long as possible before you dive back in, in on writing. That's uh, one of the things that Stephen King recommends immediately after finishing it. Stick it in a drawer for, you know, he recommends at least six weeks. Um, My mentor Gabe, author of the Boone Shepherd Trilogy, recommends six months. That's what he tries to do, depending on how, you know, passionate he feels about the story and how, I I guess, he feels it has worked out the first time through. Um, Yeah, for me, I always try to get as much space between myself and the story before I dive back into edit, so that you come back in and you feel like you're reading a stranger's work. Number two, change the font. So, at the other end of the spectrum, this is like a really quick hack that you can use probably not going to be as effective as just letting it yourself have a lot of time away from the manuscript, but I find that changing the font from whether that's, you know, Corian New, which is what I normally write into something like Times New Roman or even a really crappy font like Comic Sans MS, which is, I despise, it's just just horrible. Um, If you change the font, it can actually help you see the writing as not coming from you really well, especially if you've been staring at this thing for 100, 200 hours to produce your first draft and you just had it in one font the whole time, swapping the font might give you that extra clarity and objectivity you need to see it as it really is. So, number three, read in a different location. So, this could be a different physical location in the sense of maybe you do all your writing in your room and then you go to the library to do all your editing. Or it could be a case of you print out your manuscript so that you're looking at on paper and not looking at on the computer. Or you could do what I've been doing more recently, which is uploading your manuscript onto your e-reader, um, which is really easy to do. Just Google like how to put Word document onto Kindle or whatever your e-reader is, and it's super easy. You just email it through. And what that allows me to do is pretend that I'm just reading another book not my book, just another book that I would have read on the Kindle, um, that I would have just gotten from the Kindle store and read. And then what that basically allows me to do is to just get a few more notches away from myself, away from my ego, away from thinking that this work is mine and going towards a place where the work is just, just the work. It's not related to me. Number four, practice critiquing others and then apply this same critiquing method to your stories. So again, mentioning my writing mentor, Gabe, I have given him feedback on three of his novels at this time um, that are currently in progress, and it's an amazing process, not only because I am a massive fan of him, so being able to read this stuff early is a huge privilege, but also because it lets me improve my ability to critically examine and give feedback on other authors' writing. Now, the best bit is that because I've developed a process to do that where I kind of read it on my Kindle, I take dot point notes on each chapter. I can just go ahead and apply that exact same process to my own writing. And that way it almost feels like I'm critiquing someone else's stuff because it's so similar process-wise to critiquing his novels as it is when I critique mine. So 
Definitely critiquing other people's novels has a massive benefit because it just allows you to sort of pretend that you're reading their thing and not your thing. And then if it's theirs, you can make all the harsh comments that your heart desires. Number five, write something else before beginning to go back into the edits to cleanse your palate. Along with tip number one, which is that idea of waiting as long as possible for you, before you go back into the editing, this has been so useful for me personally. So after I finished a really big novel, biggest thing I've written, 110,000 words in the fourth month of this year, I spent the next two months going away and writing a completely separate novella. Still fantasy, um, but it was a different thing and that was just the right amount of palate cleansing that I needed before I could go back into the other thing. And if you can combine separating, uh, sorry, if you can combine waiting a long period of time before going back into editing and writing something else in that time period, that's just going to accelerate your ability to distance yourself from that original manuscript. And lastly, number six, which is continue, uh, consider printing or reading it on an e-reader. I obviously didn't think these points through too well because I did mention that a bit for, before. But like I said, having it on an e-reader or having it printed out just provides you your brain with that extra level of strangeness, I suppose, so that you can be approaching it as if it's something new and not something that you've been working on for a long time.